Viagra, you're not so hard. Your phone lost service, you got no bar. Just ran out of gas, you will not go far. I'm the joker, they ask if I got those scars. I'm a cop, so they all wanna stop my art. You a rat, it's a fact, I don't call no knocks. Everyone ain't gonna beef, you don't want no part, motherfucker. They sweating like an episode of Hot Ones. Go against me, then you better get a shotgun. It's everything, you're never getting better on my top, son. Everybody shut up and just let me get the job done. You are not pop, not big, you are not pun, you are not hot, not sick, you are not numb. I'm ready for the walk. Alright, what's going on, guys? Quarantine day number seven, maybe more for some of you. Sarkon's Corner. I am the one, the only, the W O O K I E. Joined here, as always, by one Mr. Big Z. What's up, Z? Hey, uh, another week of isolation. Uh, kind of working, kind of not. I am available for contact, and I answer questions as they are submitted to me. Mm. And that is my work day. Uh, Sounds thrilling. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know we're all we're all going through the kind of, uh, what do you call it, cabin fever? Yeah, today, uh, yesterday... And today is uh, starting to be like, okay, what's the day look like? Oh, yeah. yeah. The same thing it looks like every day, Pinky. Same day, same thing I did yesterday. Same thing I did the day before that. Yeah, I'm starting to get under the cabin fever. Obviously, I've been on, uh, I don't want to say coronavirus watch earlier than you, but I'm starting to get uh, a little bit of the cabin fever. We went for a quote-unquote walk yesterday outside. A very quick uh, tour around the block and then back inside and scrubbed everybody down and then got, you know, got back into the, the norm of what are we going to do today? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I think, mean, uh... It unfortunately hasn't been fun. Um, that's why we've been doing a lot of the tournaments over on Challenge for you guys. Obviously, dailies are still running. Q, uh, let's see. What is it? Quarantine daily number seven. Uh, I yeah, believe talk, talk to we, us about that. How's that been going? I mean, thus far, it's been going good. Um, you know, we've got a number of people that join every day. Every day has been a newer format. Uh, what was, let's see, Wednesday was AOA only. All right. I know your your most favorite format. I, I didn't have that problem if it's all AOA, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was AOA only. Um, let's see, today, as of Thursday, time we're recording this, um, it will be must contain Brobnar. Let me see. Let me double check it. I, I'm almost positive. So, yeah, it's got to uh, contain Brobnar or Sanctum. So do the players have to own these decks? How's that work? Yeah. Yep. They've all had to own. We've done one. Um, Dave Cordero. A lot of you guys might be familiar with him. We've done one neck decking, you know, quote unquote net deck challenge where you got to pick any deck you any wanted, deck. basically. Okay, and. He kind of formed it off of that. What is it? Kote? Kota? I'm not sure how they pronounce their their acronym. But um, for each deck that was a copy of itself, basically, he gained three chains. So we uh, did that once. Um, that one, I don't know. Like, I don't so know did if people... a lot of people pick the same deck? No. In fact, nobody picked the same deck. Oh, okay. <laughs> not a soul picked the same deck. Everybody picked something different. That's cool. Um, so the chains didn't come into play, but... It's uh, it's been interesting to see some of these decks that are out there. I got to watch a very interesting Heart of the Forest Sting deck yesterday, mm. um, which unfortunately you can imagine it went to time because Heart of the Forest Sting. Oh, excuse me, Heart of the Forest Sting. That's kind of what it did, and unfortunately, it didn't prevail. It got pretty pretty deep into the tournament, but it just it didn't it didn't make itself out. Um, it just didn't. And for the opposite deck had enough stuff to be burning through its deck quickly. Um, exalts. So for our not exalts, I'm sorry, tributes and stuff like that. Are these Swiss or are they? I've been doing them a little different every day. Last night on Wednesday we did Swiss. Um, I've been doing a lot of them double elimination, kind of. I guess what you would say, vault tour style. You know, you you take that second L, you're kind of done for the day. Yeah, you know, kind of keeping that same ideal of, you know, taking that second L means your day is finished. Pretty much. Um, you know, it gives people, you know, maybe if you weren't, you know, you don't have to continue playing once you take the second loss. You know what I mean? We're still working on prizes. I've been kind of emailing slash discording with Josh back and forth, trying to get something for you guys for for as the time as we sit here um just unfortunately i don't think he knows really what's left and i don't know if they're still in office either so that that might be another problem i'd be pretty surprised if they were they're probably all working from home 
That would be my assumption at this point in time, is that they're all working from home. I doubt they are considered essential staff. Come on, if game... So you saw the article that came out just a few days ago with GameStop, correct? No. So GameStop wanted... So most states are under the safer at home, Mm -hmm. I guess, act or whatever you want to call it, where basically businesses are shutting down if they're not essential. GameStop themselves wanted to say we're essential. <laughs> we, we we need to be in business. I mean, obviously, if you guys been following GameStop and you're a big video game fan, you know GameStop's been hemorrhaging money for years now. I couldn't even tell you. I'm not even going to give you a, since you know us at the show are so bad with numbers. I'm not going <laughs> to give you an idea of numbers, but I know they've been hemorrhaging money for quite some time. Um, and basically, obviously, when the coronavirus hit, there's there's not much to do except play video games, right? Play video games, watch TV, Netflix, yeah, all that kind of fun stuff. If you're a Star Wars fan, um, the new episode of Clone or the new season of Clone Wars is out. If you're a Star Trek fan, Picard is out. But like, other than that, there ain't much to do. You're you're kind of yeah, I don't know what season he's on, but my son has actually been watching Clone Wars. Uh, it's been his go-to show recently on Disney+. Plus. Not that I'm yeah. advertising that, but that is what he's watching. I love, I loved the Clone Wars. I watched it when it came out. So I was a big fan, and, you know, here we are all these years later, and we got another, you know, we got season seven yeah. out now, and I've been watching it as it, as it pops up. I wish they would have just... I really wish, especially now. Maybe I don't. I don't know. Because now I'm thinking about it. Like, I really wish they would have just dumped it all and let me just play. Or let me just watch. Yeah. You know, I could kind of just binge it. But it's like, at the same time, it's, it is something I look forward to the next week. And with not having much going on. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I got something to look forward to next week. You know? I've actually Clone, been playing D and D. Like, I hadn't played that in a long time like at least D&D, not regularly eh? yeah we, we've been playing almost every day because you know I have a very captive group of players right now sure. literally captive um, <laughs> I mean it's something you can do over a Skype or a Discord or you yeah, know we it's use very Roll easy 20 and um, Facebook Messenger and we've just been running games and it's been good yeah but a little bit to talk about today um, I don't know. We're going to get into our triad discussion here in a little bit. But the one big thing that I did notice, if you guys are paying attention to the Facebook, um, is that Alliance has shut its doors for the time being. Meaning... Makes sense. There's no way to get mass mutation when it comes out, as far as I'm aware. They haven't I mean, released anything about that, but I am assuming all of those dates are going to be pushed once the crisis is over. We'll, we'll start to get more information from Fancy Flight. But at the moment, since we know everything is delayed until at least June, um, at the earliest is what they said. Uh, uh, for OP, at least. Yeah, yeah. OP, which is basically anything we'd hear from FFT. I don't expect. I mean, that's obviously, I'm assuming... And this is all assumption because we haven't heard anything. They're still releasing articles. I mean, yeah. just yesterday, or no, just this morning, they've released a, an L5R article. They released one yesterday, too, and the day before that for Arkham Horror. So they're still getting information out there. We're just not seeing anything. We're seeing a lot for Legion, which obviously Star Wars is their big IP being it's star wars you know obviously huge and then we're seeing a little bit for l5r and marvel champions again still still kind of status pro quo on 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 keyforge not I mean, not Keyforge a lot lives and dies based on like op and selling product and getting new stuff out there because of everything that's going on like i honestly don't expect to hear much from uh keyforge ffg sector until may like i, I just don't um but i'm kind of surprised we're not getting any spoilers though i mean i guess you don't know when it's coming out but yeah like if you don't know when you, the release date of your product is i don't know how much that marketing pays dividends um from a business perspective mm-hmm um, hence, we have not seen anything spoiler-related, uh, basically, since the 
initial onset of like the crisis here at the United States because it's getting mm. fairly bad if you pay attention to like death tolls and stuff um, here. Not that we're at Italy, but it's it's not good. So no, it's not. It's obviously not great. So um, Alliance has shut its doors. Um, and there's only two ways I know you can get Keyforge product. One is through Alliance. One is through. It's my phone. You know, my phone doesn't ring all day, and now it decides to <laughs> ring. Um, <laughs> right. Um, Alliance has shut its doors. So the only way you can get it through, I, I know of, is you can either get it through Alliance or you can get it through FFG. I don't know. I'm assuming, again, we're all kind of assuming FFG is shut down. Um, and now Alliance is shut down, so that's going to put a little bit of a little bit of a hankering in in a new set. And I guess you probably don't want to be releasing a new set without a you know a new vault tour like they've done in the past. So yeah, they might wait to push that back a little bit. All speculation. I have yes, no, yes. no nothing. We have no inside knowledge on this. I have, I, I have nothing I, support. I it. just don't expect to hear anything till May, and then that's going to be kind of like, here's where we are now. Here's where we're planning with math mutation. Uh, maybe some information on what like future OP will look like going forward, since the timeline, of course, all went to hell. Um, and then, and then they kind of push forward from there. Um, that is my expectation. But as we just said, we have no insider information here. This is not coming from anyone that we know personally. Um, it's just kind of what I think is going to happen based on what's going on. Because, I mean, like, obviously there's more important things going on right now, honestly. Right. <laughs> so, we kinda, and we kind of got to, you know, keep it, um, I guess, in perspective as far as things go, right? Yeah. And, because, and I, I mean, we don't know what, and that's the thing, you know, this all goes away tomorrow. Everything changes. Yeah. Now, is it going to go away tomorrow? I would highly doubt it. No. You know what I mean? But it's it, not going away tomorrow. It's not go, right. I mean, <laughs> yes. the chances of it going away tomorrow are slim to none. But I mean, let's just say a miracle happens. I mean, let's just let's be on the positive side and say uh, a I don't want to say a cure, but let's just say it disappears for funsies sake. Everything will change, you know? Yeah. There, there will be maybe a week or two where we all kind of get reacclimated and they make sure, you know, governments make sure that this is really gone. But, you know, at the same time, it's, it's one of those things where it's like everything literally will change. People will start going back to work sooner, you know, stuff like that. So it's, it's just, it's tough to say right now because we have I feel like a lot of the times I'm walking blind in the situation. Yeah, based on the the state of change and how quickly everything is progressing and changing every day, I, I I'm confident to say that no one on this planet can possibly predict what five days from today will look like. Mm. So, like I I just go about my day. I check the news. I get ready for my next D and D game and. <laughs> go go on with my life so right but let's get into we kind of started on this path uh, a few weeks ago yes with getting ready for worlds now worlds has obviously been postponed but i think it 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 does do some good to kind of talk about it we talked about adeptive three weeks ago before we got kind of the big news and josh coming on and then the other format that was going to be active during that time was triad Mm -hmm. now try it again as another format most of us don't have a lot of experience with talk to uh, us a little bit try about triad what is what, what is triad number one for maybe people who aren't aware all right so triad in a nutshell is you both bring three archon decks these are decks that you've chosen um for mini set um they you will look at your you'll sit down you'll look at your opponent's three decks they will look at your three decks and then you'll be given a specified amount of time which that amount of time that you look at the three decks we were never told yet um but you'll give that be given a specified amount of time um to see which deck that you would like to strike meaning that your opponent will not get to play with the deck that you strike um, you choose the, which ones to strike without the knowledge of the other person, so that's chosen at the same time. You reveal which deck is struck. The other person looks at their two decks. 
they choose which deck that they will play in game one. Uh, so you play game one. Um, the winner of game one has to retire their deck and take their second deck. Um, the loser of game one, given the last time we played Triad, has to stay on that deck, the one that they were playing that they just lost with, and play game two. If the winner of game one wins game two, that is the winner of the match. If the loser of game one wins game two, they switch to their deck, and both people are now playing on their second deck, and the winner of that game will win the match. Um, so that is what triad is. Uh, so it is by default best of three. Um, basically, it comes down to to win the match, you have to win a game with both of your remaining decks that were not struck by your opponent during that starting window. Now, I said the last time we saw Triad run by OP that the person who loses game one had to stay on that deck. That was a ruling that was made that day. Um, we Was that still Cascade Games doing that? No, that was Yeti was that, in Vegas. No, that wasn't. That was Nova. No, Nova that, was no. running their own thing, wasn't it? Yeti, Yeti in Vegas was the one that you had to stay on the, the, the okay. deck. Nova ran by whoever in uh, the Grand Championship was also Triad. That's our only other form of Triad OP we've seen. Um, in that one, the loser of Game 1 could decide which deck they wanted to play in Game 2. Um, we do not have, nor did we receive, confirmation from anyone uh, for how that was going to be determined in Worlds, nor did we know how much time we would have to strike a deck for Worlds. Um, we assume all that information was going to be uh, given to us probably around now, but given, you know, things, we don't know that information, which doesn't really change a lot of what I'm going to talk about. So there's some more nuanced strategies that we could talk about later, like once world yeah, does the, come. The bigger strategy The would big be... thing that I want to talk about is just the the between the other two and this, I think this is the this is where your most skilled player on your team needs to be because there are going to be multiple matches every single time you sit down that are won or lost depending on which deck you struck. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, and there's no like this is the answer of what, what decks to strike because I don't know what decks you anyone has specifically to them um, but what this is where what we talked about this we talk about this a lot a lot of people talk about this a lot reps with your deck is the most important thing and which makes it even more complex and skill based as far as you as a player because you have to have reps with three different decks and a lot of reps. The reason why reps matter here is, like, for all three decks, you need to know how does this do against a rush deck? How does this do against a combo deck? How does this do against a heart of the forest deck? How does this do against a Jenka deck? Um, how does it do against a deck that has a lot of archive? How does it do against decks that have really good artifact control? Because because some decks are really reliant on artifacts in your own deck, and you might not realize it until you start playing a bunch of games. So, like, to be the triad pro, to run out there and expect to do very well in this scenario, is to, in my opinion, to say that you've sat down with the three decks that you have, not only are you comfortable playing those decks, you've probably logged over two to 300 games with each deck against many different types of opposing decks so when you sit down you can look at your three opponents decks not only be able to identify just like normal archon what those three decks that you're facing are good at then be able to identify which decks are um, going to provide trouble with, for more of your decks based on your experience like what like you know the weaknesses of your decks so out of those three decks, which decks can exploit those weaknesses the most and which ones you know your decks would struggle against the most right there, um, which is really hard. I, got that, I, I just listed a bunch of things that are big asks for casual players. Um, they're big asks for competitive local players. Um, there's a lot of game grinders on TCO out there that will, will fit the bill for this, but I think this slot is by far the hardest 
Um, and then to a great extent, um, a long time ago, uh, Phil, who used to be on Team SAS, wrote an article about how Triad um, is more pay to win than any other format. Um, because honestly, if you sit down with three super busted decks and they're all like A plus category or S tier decks, I mean, there's going to be players that will not have one of their three decks that will beat either of your, any of your three. And as I said, you have to win with both of your decks to win this format. So if you don't have, like if one of your decks is clearly a dog and they don't strike that and you're up against these super crazy decks, unless you super high roll and they super low roll, you might've just lost already. So very, very tough spot on the team. Now, is there any sort of strategy to deck selection? I mean, is this going going into it? Obviously, you're going to pick three decks. <laughs> I've heard some I stuff for about like looking for this or that to try to like throw off your opponent, like running a heart deck, and if they don't have artifact control in all their decks, they have to strike it. But the more that I've actually played Triad in practice, the more I'm leaning towards take your best three decks. I'm not saying like the best SAS number. Take the three decks that you have the most games with that have the best winning record um, because you need, first of all, you have to have the experience and then the, the they need to have the most consistent wins uh, among all your decks. Um, in some cases, this could, there are decks that I will do that better than what I would put for the best of three because there's some really weird combo decks that are like really good at winning like you know, 60% of the time, which could be really good for best of three, depending on, you know, how they're winning. Because sometimes decks just win with regard, without regard to what your opponent's doing, but they also just lose without regard to what your opponent's doing. So there's some really mm-hmm. good combo decks that are good for best of three that I would not put in my triad because their overall win percentage is not nearly as high as I would want it to be um, when I know I have to win with both decks to proceed past the match. And there are people that are going to sit down across from you that are going to have three very, very good decks. Um, another thing is the the more you play, the more you see it. But like to recognize what uh, certain things that are just really, really good, um, like recognizing that there's a Jinka, recognizing that there's Brig, recognizing that there's Helper Bot plus too much to protect with my Night Rupture, like. Like those things that you need to uh, like ha- have experience with seeing, recognize when grump buggy matters and when it doesn't. Um, uh, understanding whether a deck with Choda and Nature's Call and Pixies can actually go off and win more than one or two keys on one turn. Like all of that, like seeing if a, a deck that has key abduction actually matters. Um yeah, there's a it's a big ask to sit down in the triad slot and to go five and one for your team. Um, I mean, I know there's people on my team that are going to be in the triad slot that I would not want to face them, even if my triad <laughs> is what I mean. My triad would was planning on being really ridiculous. I mean, like I don't know who wins those ma- that those matches honestly either, but like I don't want to face them because I know the decks that they're running. Right. So in deck selection, basically, I mean, bring bring decks that, number one, have a high win rate for you and you're very familiar with. Yes. So as far as we now we've, we've sat down, it's time to play the game, being able to recognize what is going, is it what's going to hurt you or is it can the deck do it? Which is more important? Um, the, whether the decks can actually do it is, is like first tier deck analysis. Like that's just the skill that you need to have always. Um, once you get to triad, you need to be able to identify which deck is the biggest threat to most of your decks. Cause you don't know which one you're going to strike. Um, there's some strategy in that I've heard talked to. Like, so one of the things that one of our teammates did at one point in time at Vegas was we had a deck that had four routine jobs that wasn't actually that good, but four routine jobs is scary. So Mm -hmm. that was in their triad. I think it only got struck twice. So the strategy did not actually work out uh, in our benefit. 
but there's some masking in your own three decks to try to get them to choose like the deck that's not actually the better one just because it looks scary. Um, Cause like certain decks that just have like have four routine jobs or even a deck that has Jenka might not actually be that good. And it's really hard inside the time you're given, even if they gave us like 10 minutes to tell whether a Jenka deck is a really good Jenka deck, because it's, hard to actually get a one that's really good there's certain pieces that you need to see uh for it to actually do what it wants to do effectively um but people anyone will can see that a deck has march and generosity and key abduction sure that could be really scary and in your testing you could actually some decks might be really bad against that and if that's the only thing you see you might end up striking that um so but I mean, there's just certain things out there that you need to be a little bit more familiar with. But um, so number one, recognizing the combo exists. Mm-hmm. Number two, being able to recognize if that combo um, actually is of value. Mm-hmm. Like like Jenka decks generally will be able to do their one key abduction, but like whether it's good enough or not is going to come down to does it have enough archiving? Does it have enough draw? Does it have enough amber control to uh, allow it to get to its combo? Like that's that all has to be there for it to be a really good Jenka deck. Because there's tons of decks that have key abduction in Martian Generosity. They're just horrible. They'll do their one key and then they'll lose the game. And that's it. They yeah. just they, they do the one key and it's a one trick, basically a one trick pony. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Any other strategies we really need to know? I mean, now we're in the game, right? We've we've sat down, we've 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 selected our decks, we've we've struck one of our opponent's decks that we, you know, we think is best for us. So, this is a pure psychological thing. Um I'm a strong believer like there's some arguments to go the other way, but I'm a strong believer but once you realize the two decks that you're on, I would 100% on game one, play the deck that you think has the highest chance to win. And then this is purely like a, a psychology thing. Like at that point, because if you win that game, you're going to feel better about your situation. Um, you only have, you have, t- then you have two shots to win with your next deck. Um, so you're less likely to get anxious or tilted. And on the flip side of that, winning that first game has a chance to tilt your opponent to even if they did put their better deck second, there is a chance that they will at that point become more rattled if the like starting phase of game two isn't like perfect for them or what mm. they expected. Um, I've heard this some is arguments actually something I want to talk that, about but later. I, I don't really agree uh, with that. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I say this is something I want to talk about later too. Is is actually the the idea of tilt. Um, I know some other shows have talked about tilt, um, and it's it's a, it's a thing. I mean, it happens. it is a thing, um, and maybe we'll do we'll save tilt for next week, um, just because we could talk about tilt and how I am. Uh, I come from the world of poker for a long time. I did online tournaments. I've sat in seats in the WSOP. Um, and you know, the world, you know, world series of poker and, you know, the, the big one for ones and stuff like that. I've done that. Um, tilt is very real. And this is the first game that I think tilt really gets under your skin. Um, I played magic tilt was definitely was a thing, but I don't know if it played as big of a role because deck selection was a big, you know, deck selection was a big deal um in magic meaning that you know there's certain tiers of decks and magic and anybody can build them and you know you kind of knew dependent on your matchups where you where your ending up place was going to be where you were going to sit just dependent on how many you know what what showed up that day yeah you know what i mean so that's that was a big on it pokemon i think is the same way um and i don't know as much because i didn't play as much pokemon as a lot of other people but watching a lot of the stuff on like uh what am I looking for? Watching a lot of the I've watched a lot of the tournaments now on Twitch. Um, especially the just the newest, the big one that just dropped here at the end of February, early March. 
Um, it seems to be the same way. Yu-Gi-Oh! I am even less familiar with. So if yeah. anybody knows, I, I don't. I know there's a ton of archetypes out there for Yu-Gi-Oh! I got to imagine there's a handful that are the best. But Tilt, I'm, I'm going to put that on the docket for next week. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about Tilt. Um, and there are some some strategies that you can employ to kind of, I don't want to say affect Tilt, because if you're tilted, you're tilted. But there's there's certain strategies you can employ to make sure that you're not making bad decisions while yeah. on Tilt. Um, also related to, on the subject of the triad, I'm not saying like, yeah, we'll, we'll talk more about Tilt and as far as like even deck selection can affect that too. Um, when you're playing Triad, you're looking at, like, obviously it's all best of three, and you're looking for a long day. Um, it is a, my recommendation as far as mental fatigue. Um, I would probably lean to, against playing like the heart decks. I mean, like they, there's, there's a, there, there's, they can have success, but like the decks that tend to like have a lot of control really drag out the game. That can be very fatiguing in a triad scenario uh, where you're constantly playing that deck and you're constantly mm-hmm. battling against the three deck selection. I would try to minimize mental fatigue. Um, and some people are fine with that. They don't seem to be as affected by that as much. Um, but if you, you need to know who know you, um, if you are someone that does uh, basically, you know, have some form of fatigue after, your whatever ninth game of Keyforge, um, I would recommend against doing like hard control decks, decks that have a lot of amber control to just drag out the game. Uh, I think my sister has a double Shatterstorm deck. There's double Proclamation decks out there. Well, I guess that not that, but double Grump Muggy decks out there that can just really drag out stuff, um, right. but makes you make a lot of more decisions. Makes the games go longer. Um, triad games don't go to time that often. I don't know if I've ever actually seen one go to time. What is time talk- for a triad? 90 minutes? Yes, 90 minutes. Yeah. Um, but So that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about like those types of decks require a little bit more from you mentally, um, and that can drain on you throughout the day. Um, so I do lean more towards tempo decks, uh, amber rush decks, that stuff for, uh, for triad. And we can talk more about um, that that mental strain when we talk about tilt because that all kind of rolls up. Into yeah, one that's nice why I, want, I mentioned it here. I mean, that was on my list of stuff to try uh, talk about when try when you're talking about your own deck selection. But even with that warning, in the end, if your best deck is one of those decks and you have the most games with that, that's probably still the best pick for you. You just might need to do some like. All right, today I'm going to sit down in person live and play like 15 games of Keyforge with right. this this control deck and see what happens, see how I feel, um, and then go from there, just to yeah. build up endurance, kind of like training for a marathon. Endurance is a big thing mm-hmm. in anything, whether yeah. it's worlds, whether it's, I mean, you know, we were asked at one point in time, "Hey, it's going to be my first vault tour." You know what? What I just need to know what I can expect to let my know let my wife know how much like free time I'm gonna yeah. have and it's, zero and the and I think we answered none. Like your day is consumed. Yeah, like, like a, just, I, just throw that one away. When we talked about in that episode, like the one of the best things that could ever happen to me is my wife joining me for one of the vaults because after that experience, she's now totally gets how hard it is to like just step away to make a call. Like that's. You're so right. engrossed in everything that's going on. It's like you're literally not on this planet. You are in the crucible mm-hmm. until it's over. Until uh, yeah, until it's done. Or I mean, until uh, you're uh, eliminated. Certain, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can you can take two L's and then I get my second loss. I get to make a call. <laughs> right. Yeah. Not. I guess not care anymore. But you know, a lot a lot of that goes into you know. I mean, I've I wasn't in, in all the ones that I was eliminated, and I wasn't eliminated till the end. So. You know, that's that dreaded my I take a lunch, you know, lunch break and then I'll immediately drop the game afterward. It happened every time. So that's yeah. just the way it is. So we'll get into tilt uh, more coming up next episode. I'm trying to keep these short for you guys. Um, I'm not sure whether to keep them short or long. Like we're all under quarantine. So like, I mean, does we it got matter? all the time in the world now. Right? right. We got all the time in the world to do a lot of different things. 
Um, but I don't know, like just during these times, I think kind of hanging out with your family is, is the most important thing right now. I know it is for me. Um, I mean, we all have relatives that are elderly or sick. Uh, I mean, my wife's mother is like number one, me and my wife's mother. If you, if you guys know my relationship with my mother-in-law, we don't always see eye to eye. However, she's still my wife's mother right and yeah. i know if my wife were to lose my uh, lose her mother there would it's not going to be a pretty few weeks you know coming up so obviously keeping her healthy making sure that those two are staying in contact because she does you know again it's one of those things where her her percentages of death from this are just so high uh-huh. she's a smoker she's over 40 she's not overweight so kudos to her Um, but you know, she already has underlying health issues, you know, where she, to the point where she's, she's already at home due, due to her health issues before this thing even started. So now it's like, oh man, you know, and you just see the percentages and you're like, all right, well, you know, let's make sure that, you know, you guys are at least staying in contact, you know, still six feet away. That was absolutely, we went for a walk yesterday, like I said, and it was the absolutely most terrifying 20 minute walk I think I've ever taken in my life. <laughs> I know they say like, you can go outside, just keep your social distancing. But yeah, it's all weird right now. It's like the, the planet today is not the same world we lived in two weeks ago. No. And that's the thing. It all changed in two weeks. I mean, our governor just shut down the whole state as of Tuesday of this week. So all non essential, and it's crazy to think what becomes an essential job when yeah. it's like no non essential jobs. And I was talking to my neighbor, um, and I'm like, "Oh, so you guys, you know, you guys got some time off?" And they're like, "No, we w- I work in cooling." And I'm like, "Well, that doesn't seem essential." And what, it's like, "Well, I don't we do even industrial. know what that means." So like heat, uh, cooling, like um, freezers and whatnot. Okay. So there, you know, I guess you can consider them more like an HVAC type person. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, I always yeah. consider that somewhat essential. It's not HVAC. That's that's the biggest thing. But, like, I didn't realize that, like, oh, companies like Johnsonville, uh, the Brat Company, rely on them. Golden Guernsey relies on them. You know, like, oh, okay, so companies, food prep companies rely on you for their refrigeration. Got it. That makes sense. Okay, so you, I guess you are. I guess you are essential. And then there's some companies where, you know, again, talking to the neighbor, he works for a glass company, which huh. is completely not essential. But they're like, we're not shutting down. Like, they're making that decision just to not shut down because they can't afford to. Like, they'll, they'll legitimately go out of business if they shut down. So, But uh, alcohol hmm. stores, for all of you wondering, is considered an essential <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> I don't know if that's in all places or if that's just in Wisconsin. Uh, but when I saw that that alcohol uh, stores are considered essential business, Ghost I couldn't specs. help but laugh. Boop. Yeah, I couldn't help but laugh because it's like, oh, you know, I already live in. Basically, if if I don't, if you guys have ever listened to one of our old, not our old episodes, this is an old episode I used to do for another show. Uh, We went through the 20s, 20 most drunken cities in America. Wisconsin had 17 of them. So, and not only that, you know, uh, (laughs) alcohol stores are considered essential business. I'm like, who knew? Not me. I didn't. I kind of just thought everybody would be like, well, if you wanted, it's at the grocery store, I suppose. You know, that's that's one way of getting it, but I guess they're considered essential. So, Z, you got anything else before we get out of here? We'll we'll take your questions. If you guys do submit questions, if anything Z talked about, we'll take them next week uh, and kind of go from there. Um, we'll get on to Tilt. No, just, uh, yeah, we'll talk about Tilt next week. Just stay safe. Keep playing some Key Forge. Mm-hmm. Uh, for whatever reason, you can't find some Key Forge stuff to buy. My shop's still running. I'm, I'm a bit selling decks this week. I sold, like, 15, 16 There is decks. no Key Forge to buy. Yeah, like... The game stores are considered not essential, so they shut down. Yeah, like, I actually... Yeah, my sales are actually doing just fine. I've got decks out yeah, there. I mean... Plenty of deals. Getting, well, well, people have been buying the cheap decks. They've been buying the... I think I have a thing that's, like... $15 to get like four of the really low SAS decks. So I know, I know we've been like, we normally talk about more high end competitive stuff in news, mm-hmm. 
But I think people are getting bored with those, like, because there's only so many times you can play them, and you're not playing against different people now. So you're mm-hmm. not really, unless you're playing on Crucible, you're not getting to see those different strats. So, I mean, I've been pulling decks from my box and just going, here's a deck, honey, let's play. And just busting it open and playing. Yeah. You know, just just checking it out because it's like, yeah, I would I would never play with this deck, but I don't. Number one, I don't want to you know beat up my wife with with the good decks because you <laughs> know at least for the next month I'm gonna have to live with her. You know, so it's yeah. like let's just bust out two decks completely at random, and let's see where it goes. Let's just see what it is, see what happens, and let's play. Sure, we found those mismatches. We found those decks that just can't do anything and we've but we've you know i might have pulled some gems out too i don't know we'll we'll have to wait and see really as to when all this passes over and it gets the the deck gets out into the wild as they say yeah yeah i'm like pokemon now almost keep playing key forge and keep getting at it daily tournaments are still continuing there will be one every day they run regardless um we we did have one tournament where it was just dave and one other person thank you um nathan for picking the most obscure um stipulation of all time i think this was like a paragraph oh my god that sounds right (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> his his was a paragraph and everyone's like i don't get it and so dave dave and one other person were the only two to join but uh other than that we've had really you know pretty good success we've had at least i think eight to ten every day i think eight's been the minimum ten's kind of been um not the maximum but you know that's kind of been the minimum numbers is eight to ten somewhere in there have been playing every day um, different stipulation. I know a lot of people. I I don't know what to do for some of the people who are like, you know, I don't really want to search for a deck every single day. I really don't know what to tell you on that one because I don't know how to keep it fresh. Otherwise, if you have a, if you have anybody has any ideas on how to keep it fresh without playing the same decks day in and day out, feel free um, to to kind of you know send me a PM on Discord or just even put it in the Discord. Um, other than kind of putting some stipulations on it and trying to have some fun, I'm uh, I'm kind of like you know, hey, if we just put steps on it, sounds good to me. But Z, I'm gonna let you get back to the Viking experience, whatever that is. <laughs> oh, the um, Steam game? Is that what it is? It's just a game. Uh, yeah, it's just Expeditions Viking. It's a oh Expeditions Viking. I've been seeing you play that. Yeah, and I'm sure you've seen me. But I've been playing Modern Warfare. Yep. So, uh, yeah, modern warfare and black ops Four tactical strategy game where you walk oh. around and pretend you're a Viking Lord and make decisions, whether you're going to kill citizens or not. And that kind of thing. Kill them all. No, I'm, I'm, I'm a peaceful dude. You're a peaceful Viking. <laughs> yeah. That seems very oxymoronic if you ask yeah. me, but okay. You get more but either way. You get to see more of the game. Ah, uh, gotcha. But if you guys want to come play some M-Dub or let's see, what else do I have? I have tons of games. If you guys want to play, just play some games, even if it's not Keyforge at the current time, just shoot me a message. I'm more than willing to jump into some fun games. I have, I can't even tell you how many games I have on Steam. So for me to like name them, I would just be taking up more of your time. Oh, so I'm, I'm more than willing have, to have some fun. I, says, I think it says I have 105. Uh, yeah, I I don't even know how many Steam games I have. I've gotten so many. Back when I was doing YouTube for video games, I would get so many like, check this game out, and it's just it's a it's a pile of junk. Like it's not fun, you know. But they would want you to like put it on your YouTube channel and all that jazz. Like play it on your YouTube channel. And it is what it is. So, guys, we'll get to tilt next week. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let us know what's going on with you guys, and if you guys are you know obviously staying. Don't deny it. Every record I wrote is vibing right. and Peace. spread like coronavirus. That's COVID 19. That window is IP. I've been going fly speed while you go on IG. 12 years in the game, if you know what I mean, man. These are kind of bars where you don't need ID. They mimicking what I'm doing. I've really been an influence. They listening to my music and thinking that they can do it. It's finicky, you know I'm proving. I literally been a dude. It's literally skipping school and sipping on gin and juice. Ain't no getting in my way. I'm the editor in the game. If they think they get away with a little bit of shade, then I hit them with a straight set of tissue in their face. And I'm splitting different ways and they never look the same. I'm a monster. Motherfucker, I'm a monster. I thought I told you I'm a monster. Motherfucker, I'm a monster